Hey guys, how are you? Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. This video is for your cereal box book report. In class last, last, or sorry, two weeks ago, you got this packet, your cereal box book report. Um, it has all of the information that you need to get started, to complete this project, and then to look at how your project will be graded. So if you can go ahead and find this packet, we'll get started from here. So if you flip over to the second page, this one right here, it breaks down all of the sections of the cereal box book report. So the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you have your cereal box set aside. After you have done that, I would recommend just working through this list of um, aspects of the box. So the first one that I would start with is the front of the box. Give yourself um, maybe about a day to do the front of the box. Um, you need to include the name of the cereal and a picture. Um, in class uh, two weeks ago, several people asked if they could use clip art or images from um, the computer. Um, I am fine if you want to use um, an image of a cereal bowl or a spoon. Um, you do need to design the actual cereal, so that needs to be something that you draw or you can use paint, um, the paint program, and pull up different um, shapes for your cereal and print those and cut them out individually. Um, but as far as the bowl and the spoon if you want to print out um, an image from clip art or that you find online that's fine but you do need to create your own cereal because the shape of the cereal um, as well as the colors and the ingredients need to relate to your book so remember um, when I showed you my cereal box in class my cereal was called frosted mountains um, so my cereal shape might be triangles and I might put little snow caps on the end of the triangles so you want to take your time and be um, thoughtful and creative with um, how you are designing your cereal box. Um, before you get started and put anything on your cereal box, remember you need to cover it. So like I showed you in class, I used white computer paper to wrap um, the outside of my box and the top also where the flaps are that open and close. You don't have to wrap the bottom. Um, you can use construction paper, you can use um, cardstock, you could use wrapping paper if you have a solid color wrapping paper. Um, if you use a print wrapping paper, it needs to relate to the name of your cereal. So that covers the front of the box. Um, be as creative with this as you want to. Um, use different colors, use different um, types of materials. You can use pipe cleaners, construction paper, stickers. Um, be creative, have fun with the front of the box. Um, you do not have to um, use cursive for any of the information on the front of the box. If you want to use really tall skinny letters or wide chunky letters, that's perfectly fine. Um, this is your opportunity to be creative and design your own cereal box. So working down our list here, there you go, you can see it, um, the right side of the box. This is where you make a list of ingredients that include the story elements, which is the main characters and the setting. Under the heading ingredients, you're going to list the main characters and the setting and write at least one sentence about each of them. So I would strongly suggest that you type this information. If you do it in Google Docs, you're going to make your margins really narrow. So that what that means is you might do a margin of um, two and a half on the left side and two and a half on the right side. So that'll give you a really skinny column. So when you type your information, it's really narrow. So all you have to do is cut and then glue onto the side of your box. We covered your characters in your My Side of the Mountain reading guide packet. This is, um, you can find these on the first few pages of your packet. Um, the characters that are listed are the ones that need to be included in your ingredients section. And then you have your setting. Um, and don't forget that you have to have one complete sentence about each of those. Okay, the back of the box. This is where you're going to write a one paragraph summary that describes the main problem and the solution of the book. 
you want to use words that will grab the reader's attention and make them want to buy your cereal. Okay, it's only one paragraph. Because it is a novel summary, you need to have a minimum of about seven to eight sentences. I would say you should be aiming for about 15 to 20 for this one paragraph summary because you're summarizing an entire book in one paragraph. Um, for the one paragraph summary, um, and I'll post some additional reminders um, on Google Classroom for this, but for the one paragraph summary, you don't have to do your cornerstone heading. The only heading that you'll include um, will be in the middle of the page that you type, and it'll be the title of the book. So I'll post an example for you guys um, later so you can see what that looks like. Um, you want to introduce the novel, um, you want to tell us who it was written by, and introduce the characters, and then go into um, the problem of the book. Think about a plot diagram and how um, the story kind of developed based on that plot diagram, and then that will provide you with a really great book summary. The left side of the box, remember we changed that in class. See how I marked through mine? The left side where the one paragraph summary, um, we changed that to make that the back. And then the back of the box became the left side. So make sure that you've made those changes. You wanna make sure that you're putting this information in the correct place on your box. So um, the left side of your box is where your game is going to go. It can be a puzzle, a word search, a word scramble, a maze, a crossword, hidden picture, anything that you want. It just has to have information from the book. Now for this section, you don't have to use cursive either. Um, you can use whatever handwriting you want as long as it is neat and um, covers the requirements um, and it includes information from the book. The one thing that I forgot to say about the one paragraph summary, you do need to type your summary. Um, and I'll, like, I get, like I said, again, I'll post um, some reminders in Google Classroom for you specifically about what the one paragraph summary should look like. Okay, the top of the box, you're going to include the title, author, the number of pages in the book, and the number of stars you would give the book if you were a book critic. The maximum number of stars is five that you can give. So five would be, it was an awesome, amazing book. You would recommend it to anybody. Um, three would be kind of like, oh, you're on the fence. And one is, um, you really did not like this book. Um, it is okay if you want to give the book um, a fewer number of stars, but be ready to, um, justify your answers. So when you present these in class, I will ask you if you gave the book one star, why did you give it one star? And if you gave it five stars, why did you give it five? It's good feedback for me to have to see if you guys are enjoying this um, novel and how we work through it. And then the last thing that you need to include is a prize. Your prize has to be something that the main character could have used in the book or something that reminds you of the main character. You must include, excuse me, a picture of the prize on the front of your box. So remember, if you walk down a cereal aisle, we just bought a box of um, Honey Nut Cheerios last week, and inside of it is a Star Wars color-changing spoon. And as soon as Hamilton saw the spoon, he went crazy because it was the only cereal box that had a prize like that um, when we were standing there looking. So we ended up with Honey Nut Cheerios because there was a color-changing Star Wars spoon inside of the box. And there was a picture of the Star Wars color changing spoon on the outside of the box that grabbed his attention. So you want to make sure that there is a picture on the outside of your box somewhere where you have um, your cereal and the name that shows your buyer what the prize is inside. Um, you do need to have something that can be included inside your box. So um, it might be a picture of something that you draw if it's too large of an item to put in your cereal box. You can make it out of clay if you would like to. If you have the actual tiny item, you can include that. If you have specific questions about your item, please let me know. Remember, no sharp items, um, so don't put a knife in your cereal box. If um, that is the price that you are choosing, please draw a picture or take a picture and include the picture in your cereal box. Don't bring any sharp items to school. Um, instead use a picture of that item. Um, if you have any questions, please send me an email and let me know. Um, I think you guys will really enjoy this project. They're a lot of fun when um, they're brought into class. 
the last page of this packet that I want to draw your attention to is the grading rubric and in-class presentation tips. So you will be presenting these, not this Thursday, but next Thursday. And there are some reminders for you 